Hi, this is Michael VK5ZEA from Port Lincoln in South Australia. Yet another YouTube video for you. This one, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the repair that I did on my vintage IC2350 dual band radio. I've had this radio since probably mm, the mid 90s. It's been a really good solid performer and I had this in my old car for a, quite a number of years until it made its way into my shack where it's been ever since and basically has been turned on ever since 24-7. Um, I noticed last year that it was doing some strange things. It just It wasn't sounding right, it was, the squelch wasn't working properly, it was just making all sorts of funny noises and uh, I immediately thought um, I've got some dried out electrolytic capacitors and I thought let's crack it open and we'll order some and we'll, re we'll replace it and um, hopefully that'll fix it but it wasn't quite as easy as that um, I'll just show you what I had to do to fix it and uh, we'll flip it over and here you see the inside of the radio um, and it's not quite as simple as I thought. All the electrolytic capacitors are all surface mount. So it was a little bit more fiddly than I thought. Um, and to disassemble this radio, um, what was needed was to pull the whole thing apart, basically. The, uh, the speaker comes off. There's a, uh, a clip here which holds the audio IC to the heatsink on the side. Um, the front panel comes off. You have to take all the knobs off and there's small um, nuts behind the knobs. That all comes off. Then this whole front panel comes unconnected from the main circuit board. Um, you can remove the uh, option boards as well to make it a little bit easier. And then it's a matter of pulling this circuit board out. Um, and there's quite a number of screws and there's some more little heat sink brackets under here which hold three integrated circuits uh, against a central post there for heat sinking. Uh, you have to disconnect the antenna socket as well. Uh, this, I've replaced this, I've gotten rid of the old UHF SO239 style connectors on most of my radios. This is an N-type. I've always liked N-type connectors and uh, you can order it as a spare part from ICOM and it fits in the same place and I just prefer those connectors and I've done my mobile radios as well. Um, you get them all out and there's, there's four screws which are hidden down in holes here and they hold the RF modules against the heatsink of the case. Uh, I think this is the VHF side here I believe and the UHF side here. Um, so and that was a little bit tricky and there's, there's solder connections you can sort of see in here for the RF module and they've got to be unsoldered as well. Um, getting it out was fairly easy because they did not use any heatsink compound and um, it was just a, a physical bond screwed to the heatsink uh, of the radio. Um, and once the board came out then it was a matter of working out a plan of attack to get the um, get the uh, capacitors replaced. You can see some of them are, are in close proximity. There's some small ones right amongst some big ones there. There's a group here which um, were, were very suspect as the circuit board on the other side has a an inter as an integrated circuit which was getting rather warm. You could tell it was getting warm and uh, of course that will tend to dry out these things. Um, so it was a matter of getting rid of all the the old capacitors without damaging the board, ordering replacements of the same physical size and getting them back into place. And um, my surface mount soldering skills were, were tested fairly well with this because of the proximity of some of the capacitors to other pieces of uh, um, other components on the on the radio and especially in this little section here where there's I think six seven capacitors all I don't know there might be more hidden under there and you had to do them in the right order otherwise you couldn't get to the the uh, position on the circuit board to solder them into place so it, uh, it was a process over a, a, a week or so a couple of weeks to get everything and do everything. Um, I did it, didn't do it all at once because it was just, um, yeah, it's, you had to really strain your eyes to see everything, even with a magnifying glass. And I even had to remove this DC bus bar, which uh, supplies DC power to both UHF modules. That came out as well, so um, for easy access. 
but uh, once that was done and everything went back together again I checked everything out and um, lo and behold it, it fixed it it was like a brand new radio um, <laughs> I was almost suspecting expecting that when I turned it on it, it would be broken I would have killed something or would have done something I took a lot of care not to damage any of the circuit board tracks as I was desoldering the old capacitors and it's just not easy you could have got to lever one up a little bit as you desolder them it's um it's a technique I sort of worked out working on old commercial radios as well um, and when it was reassembled the thing is, it works and it works really good and we can I'll just power it up to show you that indeed it does work it won't sound very good with the speaker outside the case like that but we'll um, okay it's switched on we bring up a memory channel which is the local two meter repeater Key it up, see what happens. Right. Perfect. Uh, on the 70 centimeter side, that repeater is actually off air at the moment, so there's no point transmitting there. We'll try a distant station uh, 146.8. That's a repeater which is over 150 kilometers away. Uh, I'm not expecting we'll get there. Might go to high power and see what happens. Well, there we go, full signal. Um, 146,700 is a repeater near Port Piri, which is quite some distance away. I'm not getting that one. Uh, 126,925 is at a place called Loch Eel, which is um, on when you go past that on the drive to Adelaide. A little bit, little bit weaker, but uh, there you go. So the um, the radio is indeed working, um, and working very well. Uh, I took the opportunity also to uh, replace one of the lamps in the front here as well, which had blown, and uh, took out the whole display. I think they were all in series, so one one failed and they all went out. So there you go, one resurrected vintage IC twenty three fifty H dual band radio ready to uh, live out another 15 years of faithful service. Okay, this is Michael, VK5ZEA from Port Lincoln in South Australia. Seven threes for now, and we'll talk to you again soon.